Hi everyone, Chris from VR Flight Sim here. A few people have asked me to share my settings that I run with X-Plane and I'll look at the NVIDIA control panel settings as well as these have made a difference too. Uh, but before we get to that, I will show you um, some of the uh, hardware that I use. So first of all, the CPUs an i7-3770K. The K processors are overclockable, so um, I overclocked it to 4.5 GHz. It seems a bit of a sweet spot for explaining that, the 4.5 GHz mark, and uh, you have to use uh, ideally liquid cooling if you're going to overclock a, a CPU, uh, and I've used a Cooler Master liquid cooling block on there. Uh, I've got a GTX 1080, that's probably being uh, limited or bottlenecked as the term is by the CPU uh, in this case and um, eventually when I upgrade that should come into its own but it does a great job at helping me uh, in VR to throw enough polygons around. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM because I run a lot of programs in the background, I'm streaming from the same machine that I'm uh, playing X-Plane on. I've got uh, the original Rift CV1. Um, it does a great job for me. I use 1.5 su uh, super sampling when I'm not streaming, but just keep it at one times when I am, uh, and that seems to be about right. I've just bought the Honeycomb Alpha Flight Yoke. Um, what to say? If any of you guys are thinking of, of getting it, just get it. Just get it. It's fantastic. It's a really, really good bit of kit. Um, people say that the ailerons, the roll, is a little bit um, light. Uh, other people say it's sort of like flying a C-172 at low speed, that sort of wing pressure. Um, I don't really notice that. I think it's got a great pitch spring as well, so the, the uh, pitch resistance is really good. And I'd, I would, uh, this is a mini review for the Honeycomb Alpha, isn't it? I'd just get it, you won't regret it. Uh, Thrustmaster TFRP rudder pedals. Well. You have to set up quite a, a, an aggressive curve to deal with the fact that it's oversensitive in X-Plane. So um, I like the pedals, but I don't like the oversensitivity, and uh, I think probably I need to upgrade those. They're a little bit Fisher Price. Um, X55 throttle, this old uh, uh, reliable, has done me well over the years, and I got it 30 quid second hand off eBay, so I was quite pleased with that. Uh, scenery and textures, Orbex for the whole of the UK, True Earth, Orbex True Earth for the whole of the UK and Washington. Uh, in I fly a fair bit in the French Alps and I've got a Sky Story uh, there using X Europe 4 now, actually not X Europe 3. And uh, the autogen from that is from OSM data, so it's very accurate where they place the houses. Actually, very, very good. Using Active Sky XP weather injection, um, that just gives you the proper meter so that the uh, what what you're flying in is more accurately represented, um, and you get more complex weather models with that with different layers. I've noticed so that that's great. I'm not using any Lua plugins now apart from my own single line plugin uh, to uh, improve the cloud shadow flickering, which you might have seen in my other video. And uh, I've recently applied the cockpit shadow fix as well to increase the resolution, although that's a bit of a hack. So be careful with that one. You'll see it in one of my other videos, but it does mean you've got to uh, back up your settings.txt, as I said in that video, before you apply it. OK, so um, if we go and have a look at the desktop, and uh, let's just get rid of that. Um, coming up to X-Plane, there we go. These are my settings for X-Plane, and uh, as you can see, I've got it on high visual effects, maximum texture quality, and I've noticed it only loads about four gigs in now in max, where it used to be a lot more than that in the OpenGL version, so I imagine the texture compression is different in Vulkan. Two ticks of anti-aliasing, um, that seems to be absolutely fine for me. I'm flying in VR, that, that does what I need to. It takes away the flickering in the distance. If you only have um, full screen anti-aliasing on, if you only have FXAA um, on there, it's not good enough uh, for VR. Everything's flickering and shimmering in the distance. But just one extra tick of, uh, uh, is that super sampled anti-aliasing? I'm not sure. Uh, that, that does a great job. Uh, world obje objects on high. My machine isn't modern enough to uh, have Max and have even with Vulcan and have um, you know great uh, FPS in places like um, London City or Heathrow. It's almost there, but just not quite. And I'm trying to with the Vulcan uh, be to keep it above 30 FPS if I can. Reflections I've got on zero, but funnily enough, in places. Uh, uh, 
I've been able to bring that up to the second tick of medium, which is up here. There's actually two medium ticks. The second tick of medium's there, but there's a big problem. In VR, if you adjust your head position, all the reflections go wrong, so I can't really use it in VR anyway. Draw parked aircraft I've got on, otherwise the world just looks empty, but draw shadows on scenery I don't, and it doesn't really seem to make, from my point of view, it doesn't really seem to make much difference to the um, graphical quality uh, in VR. You're not really looking at that. The light still reflects off houses at different times of day um, and gives uh, a, a different feel, and on ortho scenery anyway, there's often shadows built into the, to the pictures on the ground. Okay, now when I'm flying, I normally have that, uh, if I'm in VR, I would have that on windowed, and I'd have this way down at 30. Now, I don't know whether it's true, but I've wondered whether that would, um, having the field of view down at 30 would uh, reduce the amount that X-Plane is having to do to render that windowed screen outside of VR. It's essentially rendering um, less of a picture on, on your PC screen while you're in VR. So I'm hoping that saves on processor time. Don't know if it's true. And I've got use VSync off. Now, so that's the X-Plane settings. Okay, that's the X-Plane settings. If we now go to the uh, 3D settings of the NVIDIA control panel, and I've, that's the global settings, but if we look at the program settings for X-Plane, I'll show you what I've changed. Everything's at default. And here, I always have that on maximum performance. Uh, anisotropic sampling I have on. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Um, quality I have actually on high performance, and that seems to make a huge difference in FPS. Um, threaded optimization I like on. And triple buffering I like on. And uh, there's actually a max, um, let's see if we can find it. There's a max frame rate setting here as well, which some people have been reporting helpful um, if they set that to about 35 or 40, apparently that can be helpful. Um, in some multiplayer things like NetFlight, you have to set it to 35 FPS here. So there's a there's a there's uh, an FPS limiter, if you like, uh, for you to experiment with. I leave that off for the moment anyway. Let's re reapply that. Okay, so uh, there it is. I hope you found some of that helpful. Um, or at least informative, compare it to your own. Probably I'm doing something terribly wrong, um, but for the moment in VR, in most aeroplanes, I'm getting between 30 to 45 FPS, even in busy areas like Heathrow. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that, with a with machine of this age. Okay, take care everyone, and I'll, uh, if you like this video, subscribe, and uh, you'll be notified of when more come out. All right, all the best, bye.